Excerpts from the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 17. Sraddha Traya Vibhaga Yoga. The Path of Threefold Faith. Faith comes first. Faith that contains determination, zeal, and momentum for spiritual growth. Verse 2 through 3. Krishna answers. People are in fact the sum total of the beliefs they hold in their hearts, Arjuna, and there are indeed various kinds of faith. One's faith corresponds to one's nature, and one's nature is equivalent to one's faith. Every individual is born with three kinds of faith, sattvic, rajasic, or tamasic, depending on their temperament. Three faiths. Those of sattvic temperament revere the gods in heaven, Rajasic people worship power and wealth, even though they might not acknowledge those as their gods. Tamasic people worship the spirits of the dead, ghosts and hurtful deities, those with negative qualities and those that harm, which again are in tune with their own disposition. Three different disciplines of three different types with gunas. There are other behaviors that bear in on spiritual attainment. One's eating habits play a part in it, and the way one performs the three main spiritual disciplines, sacrifice, yajna, offering up, purification, which is tapas, austerities, and charity, which is dana, almsgiving, also influences one's spiritual development. Each of these three disciplines can also be understood in light of the three guna types. Spiritual Significance of Food Regarding dietary practices, know that there are subtle elements in food that significantly influence the mind and therefore shape mental attitudes. This creates a cycle similar to the situation with one's faith. You are what you eat, and you eat based on what you are. And know, Arjuna, that due to the subtle impact of food on one's mind, sooner or later all serious spiritual aspirants have to face up to the issue of what they consume. Sattvic people, for example, consume pure, mild, nourishing food that strengthens them physically and brings pure thoughts and mental cheerfulness. Their foods are fresh and agreeable to the body's digestive system. Breakfast is light. Supper is as light as possible so bodily organs can rest through the night. Only sattva knows the real taste of food. Rajasic people are drawn to spicy, hot, bitter, salty, acidic, and burning food. Like those who eat it, this food produces pain, grief, and disease, and a hinder spiritual attainment. Types and Efficacy of Spiritual Practice Contemplate the three spiritual practices, sacrifice, austerity, and charity, with regards to the guna qualities. First, their sacrifice, yajna, the loving, offering, and fundamental law of nature I mentioned earlier. Sacrifice is sattvic when it is offered up for its own sake with no desire in it, no expectation of reward or attachments to the fruit of the offering. Sacrifice is rajasic when performed for self-glorification, for the sake of show and the benefits it will bring, or as an attempt to barter a favor with God. Selfish sacrifice is detrimental to overall spiritual growth. Types and Efficacy of Spiritual Purification Consider purification, tapas, which literally means to melt, as in refining ore. The purpose of purification is not pain and penance, but to deliberately refine one's life, to melt it down and recast it into a higher order of purity and spirituality. The goal is very important. It is not self-punishment, but refinement, to shift from human existence into divinity. There are three main methods of purification. The refinement of one's thoughts, one's words, and one's deeds. Also called the purification, respectively, of the instruments of one's mind, speech, and body. When you modify these three, you automatically change for the better. Purifying one's deeds, bodily austerities, consists of four key practices. Veneration of the gods, which are all facets of the one divinity. Veneration of holy ones, persons who have so dedicated their careers. Veneration of gurus, spiritual teachers, elders who set good examples. 
and venerations of the sages who already know Atma and have transcended body-mind. Speech austerities. Purifying one's words, also known as speech austerities, also include four key practices. Truth-telling, not hurting or harming, not flattering, and devotional chanting, reading aloud. I will briefly elaborate each. Always tell the truth, Arjuna, and present it in as pleasant a way as possible. If you cannot do that, remain silent. If something absolutely needs to be said, you must uphold the truth, but find a way to do it that is gentle and obliging. Do not hurt others through harsh words. Words can be more painful than physical violence and for longer. Words meant to excite negativity are an act of violence. Shun such words. Abstinence from harmful speech is very important. Scrupulously avoid flattery, even if what you say is pleasant and contains truth. Promoting vanity does not help spiritual growth. The point is to express, even under your breath, only beneficial things that promote movement toward divinity. Finally, devotional chanting, the regular reading aloud of texts, is a purification of speech that can contribute much to the spiritual process and is quite important. Mind austerity. Consider now, lastly, the purification of thought or mind austerity. This is more important than the other two refinements, words and deeds, because good words and deeds are spontaneous in the mind that is saturated with good thoughts. Maintain a calm and gentle state of mind and you won't be speaking wayward words or doing unwanted deeds. To develop equanimity of mind, allow only good thoughts and noble sentiments to arise. This may sound impossible to most people, but as we know now, one can indeed cleanse the mind through constant, intense, direct practice. When you relentlessly practice these acts of purification of thought, word, and deed with firm faith and no expectation of reward, your practices are sattvic. When you practice these acts of purification to gain admiration or respect, your practices are rajasic. Any selfish motive to receive a return, whether in this world or the next, makes the act rajasic, and this extinguishes its value for spiritual attainment. Types and Efficacy of Charity Sattvic Charity Now, Arjuna, consider the three types of charity dana, almsgiving. As I already stressed, it is one's duty to give. When you offer charity out of a positive sense of duty with no feeling of obligation in it and no expectation of reward and furnish it at the right time and place to a deserving person who can give no return, that giving is sattvic. Rajasic charity. Handing over a gift with strings attached to it makes both giver and receiver uncomfortable. Charity presented with a hint of desire for receiving a return, either here or hereafter, is rajasic. Om Tat Sat. Literally, Om that is. In essence, Om Tat Sat means God alone is the reality. From my notes on the text, this is fantastic, this next section. The phrase Aum Tat Sat integrates you into God when performing your spiritual activities and purifications. Invoke Aum Tat Sat as you perform spiritual acts. Although these three spiritual activities, sacrifice, purification, and in charity, or Yajna, Tapas, and Dana, are the most elevating actions going on in the world, they all have a tinge of worldly impurity in them, even the best sattvic practices among them. It is still the ego performing them. To cleanse these practices, invoke the declaration Aum Tat Sat as you undertake them. This ancient three-word phrase echoes far back to the very beginning of time, to when divinity first projected itself as sound. Each word, Aum Tat and Sat, represents the supreme consciousness from which everything else comes. Aum. Consider them one by one. The syllable Aum, essentially an appellation of the Godhead, 
is what spiritually knowledgeable people utter whenever they perform spiritual activities. This lends a sacred and blessed tone to their acts and begins to dissolve the tinge of impurity in them. Tat. Saying tat while performing these activities, tat literally means it or God, reminds one that all actions are God's and not one's own. This removes the sense of I or mine from the ego, from the doing. Sat. Voicing sat, which literally means that which is, existence itself, invokes an overall attitude of goodness and serves as a reminder that the action about to be done is a noble deed conducive to God-realization. Uttering sat purifies your own activities and reforms the world as well. Sat has other shades of meaning and other purposes. Any action performed for the sake of the divine is sat. To engage steadfastly in the spiritual activities, sacrifice, purification, and charity, is also sat. Repeating Aum Tat Sat creates an uplifted attitude towards any activity. The implication is that sat, that which is, is both the means and the goal, both the Godhead and the way to reach it. Acting with Sraddha in Faith Finally, Arjuna, know that faith comes first. These spiritual activities must be done with Sraddha, faith that contains determination, zeal, and momentum for spiritual growth. To do these without this firm faith is considered asat, not that which means the act is of no account spiritually, and nothing worthwhile will come of it here or in the hereafter. 